The burble. Our life. Welcome to Verbal on Life. So my name is Noel, battling MS. Over here, trying to bring you guys information that I think you need to know. And I want you to be verbal and comment below. Let us know what you're thinking. Because right now, we're in a position where the world is making fun of us. In this clip, I'm going to share with you guys what Sky News from Australia thinks about what's going on in America and what's going on with our current president. Let's take a look, because they're really laughing at us. Now it's time for Lexi's Losing It. And we need to speak about Joe. President Joe Biden's cognitive decline is hitting new lows. The poor man is dazed and confused. And when he appears lucid for a moment or two, we get bizarre stories and debunked lies. Today, he told us he made it clear to Israel to stay out of AFA. A little problem there. That's a major city in Israel, the third largest, in fact, after Jerusalem and Tel Aviv. So why is Biden telling the Israelis, don't move on there? And I made it clear to Israelis, don't move on Haifa. It's just not, I mean, it, anyway, I, I just, look what we did recently when Israel was attacked. I mean, this man looks like an old man struggling to think clearly and to speak. I mean, just talking crazy. And Biden is also telling a bizarre new story about his uncle perhaps being eaten by cannibals in New Guinea. My uncle Bozin, he, uh, he was shot down. He was on the Air Corps before there was an Air Force. He got shot down in an area where there were a lot of uh, cannibals in the time. They never recovered his body. Only a little problem. His uncle's plane, in which he was a passenger, didn't crash in New Guinea, and it wasn't shot down. According to official military records, state the aircraft plunged into the Pacific. I think now with social media, everybody's just fact-checking. So when people talk, like he just did, it gets fact-checked real quick and gets called out. He should know that by now. Pentagon records state, for unknown reasons, this plane was forced to ditch in the ocean off the north coast of New Guinea. Both engines failed at low altitude and the aircraft's nose hit the water hard. The three men failed to emerge from the sinking wreck and were lost in the crash. One crew member survived and was rescued by a passing barge. But not according to the president, who, for reasons no one can explain, has begun spinning this bizarre variation to the story where the plane is shut down, his uncle is consumed by man-eating primitives, and he's so taken by this fantasy tale that he's repeated it twice in 24 hours. Right. Uncle, they call him Ambrose uh, Brosey, they call him Bosey. I wonder if you saw like a movie or something that just triggers that story in his mind. And he said, you know what, I'm going to go out and everywhere I go, I'm going to say the same story. Because this group of people is different from that other group of people. But he forgets that everything is being recorded. Crazy. Uncle Bosey, he's a hell of an athlete. They tell me when he was a kid. And he became an Army Air Corps before the Air Force came along. He flew those single-engine planes as reconnaissance over war zones. And he got shot down in New Guinea. And, you know, and it's okay for him to speak that way, right? But an old man, you know, a grandfather speaking that way, sure, go home, let the kids go and hear a story from you. But the president of the United States talking like this? I have no idea how people can still continue to vote for this man. But comment down below, man. And uh, they never found the body because there used to be there a lot of cannibals for real in that part of New Guinea. Bizarre, bizarre. But it wasn't the only bizarre story Biden has told in the past couple of days. So yesterday he was in his hometown of Scranton, Pennsylvania, and let's listen to this little tale and see if you can follow what in God's name the president is trying to convey here. Hey, I showed up at all your convention and I was in uh, I was in the motel after the local motel getting changed after the afternoon session, go back to the evening session. I'd come down with some young activists who a little older than me, but still young activists who uh, were uh, involved in trying to reform the party. 
And uh, I was in one of those eight by 10 bathrooms, you know, they have shower, toilet, and the sink. And I got a towel on me and shaving cream. And I hear bam, bam, bam at my door really loudly. And I uh, wonder what the hell is that? I thought it was this guy, Bob Cunningham, on a radio show and a couple other guys. So I said, okay, okay, guys. You know, I used to love listening to Obama speak. The man is a real good orator. He knows how to talk. But man, this is just embarrassing. After thrilling that tiny crowd with his confused tales from, I don't know, 60 years ago, he hit a local a petrol station in Pennsylvania to press the flesh with the locals, only no one seemed terribly excited to see him. <laughs> Nobody moved. Maybe what Secret Service told him not to move. And before he left, he took a single question from the assembled media. It was a serious question about China, steel tariffs, Xi Jinping. But this was the president's answer. <laughs> Jump. <laughs> Don't jump. That, that was his answer. Let's compare that to former President Tr Donald Trump's visit to a bodega in New York City. Let's see the crowd reaction uh, in this Democrat heartland uh, part of the country. My neighbourhood. We love Trump! 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 We love Trump. Trump went to my neighborhood and I missed being there. Oh, man. I got to go over there next weekend. That's in Harlem, folks. My gosh, just a little bit different to the reception Biden received during his little walkabout. And, of course, Trump is in New York right now facing ridiculous uh, politically motivated criminal charges. Let's hear from one of the prospective jurors. Yesterday, a woman who had posted anti-Trump material on social media was added to the jury pool. The judge thought she was a fit and proper person to, to sit in the jury. And this woman, who we're about to hear, about, uh, hear from now, was only dismissed because of a scheduling conflict. Yeah, I'm sure Trump is going to get a fair trial with that judge and the likes of this woman. Can you share your opinion of, of the former president and, and, and why you felt <laughs> that you could be unbiased? Uh, I'm not a fan. And I think the handling of COVID-19 was uh, abysmal. Um, I also have a sister who's adopted from China. And um, the comments he made about China when he was running for president um, made her very anxious and therefore made me angry. Um, there are policies he has supported um, that uh, women and, and reproductive health that I do not agree with. Yes. That's the biggest part. Women in reproductive health and winning people who, and winning over never Trumpers like that young lady. At least she was honest. But the fight that Trump got to put 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 in now to win her over. She thought she could be unbiased and was only dismissed because of a scheduling issue. No wonder the overwhelming majority of Americans have little faith in the justice system. Now, we brought you footage of pro-Palestinian protesters blocking both sides of the Golden Gate Bridge yesterday. This went on for hours, causing absolute mayhem. Let's now take a look at how one of these protesters behaves as police free him from a barrel filled with concrete that he deliberately put his arm in. This man child is another lefty losing it. 
That's a man child. What is he doing holding on to that? Okay, hey, hold on. By the numbers. All right, let go of your fingers. Let go. You gotta send that man to jail. Let go of the bar. Let go of the bar. Let go of the bar. Come on. Let go of the bar. Let go of the bar. Let go of the bar. Stop squeezing my hand. Let go of the bar. Stop squeezing my hand and twisting it. The rebar is cutting the inside of my hand. Stop prying my fingers. Stop prying. Stop. 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 Let go of the rebar. Stop. You're hurting me. Let go of the rebar. He's free. He's free. He's free. He's free. Oh, what can you say? There's a lot I could say, but I probably shouldn't. It's been a while since we featured Biden's White House Press Secretary, Queen Jean-Pierre. What's she been up to? You know, I wouldn't mind her doing all of that dancing and cheering if she was doing a great job as a press secretary. But it's a bit sad that she's not. And let's have a little Australian content. Here is an Instagram influencer, is that still a thing? Pining, pining for the return of Dan Andrews and lockdowns. I think she's joking, really. Who can tell these days with so many lefties losing it? I miss and support Dan Andrews and I wish that he would come back and rule Melbourne and lock us all up because they were the best times of my life when we had nowhere to go. We weren't allowed after out after 8pm, one hour a day curfew. It made me feel loved. It made me feel special. Bring back Dan Andrews. We are living in some crazy times. But I think what's going to happen is they might find Trump guilty in court, but then it's going to get taken on by a appeal. And all of this is for the campaign to say, look, they found him guilty. Because at the end, he's not going to go to jail. We cannot take an ex-president to jail. That sounds insane. And it just doesn't sound real to me. Comment down below, what do you think? Is he really going to spend a day in jail? I don't think he is. All of this is just because he's running for president. I think it's obvious and people just want to pretend like they don't see it. But again, comment down below. See you in the next video. Peace. The burbles are nice. All right, that was Sky News making fun of America. We need to step it up and we got we should be able to do better.